saying that with our lips, but from our hearts. We love you and we appreciate you. We want to welcome every single person today that is here that consider taking the time to come and be here. You could have been doing something else, but you chose to come. And so we appreciate that very, very much. And we also welcome those who will be watching later. And we pray for everyone who is listening. We really don't know sometimes who are the ones listening. Some we do know, we hear later on, they have comments and some make um, comments too on YouTube. But we don't know who is listening. And so because of that, we pray for each person who might be listening that, you know, whatever need you have, that God will indeed meet that need and that you will come into a real close relationship with him this year as never before. So happy new year again. The year is still new, still new, still new, right? It's only the ninth, right? So it's still new. But we want to welcome you all to Restoring Church of the Living God, where our desire is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ in this nation and in all the nations, you know, wherever we might find ourselves or we're, we're able to minister wherever to give God all the praise and all the glory and all the adoration that he's so worthy of. So we just praise the Lord this morning. We give him thanks. Thank him for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to minister his word. Mm, this word right here is a precious word. It's his word. It's not my word. His word. And so I try to handle it delicately. I don't want to say anything that I'm not supposed to say at all. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit has a way of convicting you and say, uh, uh don't say that or whatever it is. So I just want the Holy Spirit to, to just take over and minister his word to his people, including myself this morning. Amen. Amen. So the topic this morning is change. Is coming. Hmm. What's this all about? Well, I started. It, it, this is based off something that um, happened. I would say maybe a couple weeks ago with an encounter that I had while in prayer. But I was thinking about 2022, right? This year that we're in now, and the 20th letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the word resin, R-E-S-I-N, and it actually means manhood or maturity. Hmm. So it's a coming to a, a completion, a completeness. So the, 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 20, the number 20 in the Bible symbolizes the cycles of completeness. So it's different cycles. And then Finally, you come to that place of completion or maturity, where everything is, 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 is full, it's, it's complete. It is often connected to a perfect period of waiting, labor. Some of us know what that is, right? And, and when I say labor, I think the ladies are going into that other place. <laughs> and I see one doing this. <laughs> okay labor and suffering. A lot of us have been through that. That is compared to a trial. And then afterwards, what? More waiting, more labor, more suffering? No, after that, after that, maybe, no, <laughs> depends on how long that period is. But after that, finally comes the reward. So, Jacob, you've heard of Jacob? Remember the one who wrestled with the angel there, Jacob. Jacob waited 20 years. Can you believe this? I had to research that. I was like, 20 years? Jacob waited 20 years to get his wives and property. And then he obtained his release from his obligation to his father-in-law. So we're going to look at... Genesis chapter 29, and I'm hoping I can paraphrase some of this, but if not, just bear with me because it will be several sentences, several scriptures. But you know what's good? You're going to all help me read them. Yes! <laughs> okay, Genesis 29, 
verses 15 to 20. It's good to have Sister Inelvis, I'm calling you Sister, with us. We haven't seen her, you're always seen her on and off, but it's good to have her with us today, amen? All right, so 29, 15 to 20. Okay, can you see that clearly? Am I standing in somebody's vision here? I come this way, can you see? We, we need a reader for verse 15. Can you see? And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldst thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what shall thy wages be. Okay, next reader. Thank you. And Laban had two daughters. The names of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. 17. Leah was tender, tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Evan said, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man abiding with me. Verse 20, I will read that. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Oh my goodness, love will make you do something. <laughs> seven years seemed like maybe seven minutes, seven days, seven weeks, bless his heart, because of his love. Oh my goodness, wow. That must have been some love. Let's look at 23. Verses 23 to 30. So I'm going to start off. Verse 23 says, And it came to pass in the evening that he, this is Laban, the, the, the father-in-law, Jacob's father-in-law, which is Rachel and Leah's father, mm -hmm. um, came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. So this is Leah, not Rachel. Anybody wants to read 24? And Laban gave unto him his daughter, Leah, Zilpah, his maid for a handmaid. Mm. Follow it carefully. Verse 25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he, and he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Mm, 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 mm. 26. And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Verse 27. I'll read that. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Oh. Seven more years. You really wanted Rachel, but because it's not custom to give the younger daughter in marriage first, I'm sorry, but he didn't tell him that at the beginning, did he? I'm going to um, let you serve another seven years for the one you really wanted. Bless his heart. All right. So, 28 says, and Jacob did so and fulfilled Fulfilled, there's that fulfillment there again. Fulfilled her week, yet that was 14 though. That was not 20. He fulfilled her week, that's Leah's week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. Verse 30 and last, and he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. So when I read this, I was thinking, okay, that's 14, that's not 20. Why are they saying 20? That, that um, he actually waited 20 years to get his wife and property. And verse, I'm sorry, chapter 31 of Genesis and verse 41 explains that. Thirty-one and forty-one. 
So, of course, this verse comes after what has happened with Jacob taking all of his wives, well, his two wives and his children, and Kathleen, what have you, and he has left Laban's service. And Laban has come after him and said, why did you do this? Why didn't you even let me say bye to my daughters? What kind of business is this? What, how, why are you treating me this way? And so verse 41 of chapter 31 says, thus have I been 20 years in thy house. That's where the 20 comes in. I served thee 14 years for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle. And thou hast changed my wages 10 times. So it took 20 years. 20 years for Jacob to actually have his, get his wives? Well, he was really planning on one. <laughs> and he got two. Oh my goodness. And the cattle, all of that was 20 years, Sister Alicia. 20 years. Oh my God. No, you and I would have said, mm, 20 years? <laughs> um, forget this. <laughs> no way. This is too long. Too, too long. Can you imagine how frustrating it must have been for Jacob not to have received what he had bargained for according to the deal he made with his father-in-law Laban? Oh my God. Um, it was a long period of waiting, laboring, suffering, but he finally reaped the blessing, the rewards. Sometimes in our period of waiting, really, think about the times that you have waited, waited and you said, okay, maybe tomorrow, Maybe flow will work out <laughs> next week. <laughs> Maybe the next two weeks. Oh my gosh, yes, something is going to happen. Something, I, I'll just wait. Yeah. I really am tired of waiting, but I'll try to wait some more. Um, sometimes we, we get a little bit despondent and um, it seems as though things are not going to change. You know what? It's just going to be the same old, same old. We don't see any difference, nothing is happening, no change really. And so we become accustomed to the routine of no change. Same thing. Today, this is it. Tomorrow, same thing. Next week, same thing. Week after, next month. So why even look for change? Okay, why am I saying all of this? I remember in prayer a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, the presence of the Lord turned up in our bedroom and we were just, you know, hearing what he had to say and, and, and he was speaking and he started to say that we should, as a people, stop saying things will just continue to be the same way, things won't change. Don't even look for change. It was so strong. Could not really shake the presence like that. Could not. It was just so strong. And we look around us and we see things in our society and in other societies that seems like they're just getting worse. And we're like, well, you turn the news on, it's the same thing you're, you're hearing. All this crime, violence, etc. And it just seems like God appears to be so silent and he's not doing anything and there's nothing new on the horizon, so to speak. So it's a new year and you know, you're saying, well, it's just a change in the date from 2021 to 2022. So really, it's just a, a change in the number, nothing new really. And so I kept hearing God saying, don't say any more that things are not gonna change. He said, stop saying that. He said, I'm about to bring about changes and my glory will be revealed. Just like that, so strong. And I thought about that scripture in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19. And you know, sometimes we, we kind of think that because the systems, the world system doesn't really change, it changes a certain, a certain way, but it's the same thing over and over. We kind of tend to think that God himself is like that, that he, you know, he's, 
he's just going to allow things and he's just going to just not really do much. But he's not that way. He might seem silent, but when he does seem silent, when he's not speaking in your circumstances whatsoever, he's up to something. He still has a plan. Right? And a lot of times when we don't see him moving or we don't feel him moving, he's still moving. And eventually we will see the result. We'll see it. Now what does it say? It says behold. And behold is actually saying, you know, pay attention to this. Look carefully at this. I want you to stop looking at everything else. Look at zero in on this. Focus on this. Because I, I, I want you to see it. I want you to really see this. Behold, I will do a new thing. I, God, will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? In other words, gosh, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to reveal it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now we read those words and we're like, yeah, I'll make a way in the wilderness. But in the wilderness, there is no water right? No water in the wilderness. It's dry. It's parched. And sometimes you and I might be going through some wilderness experiences. It's a desert experience where everything is just dry. There is nothing flowing. There is there's no new thing happening. We're just going through our wilderness experiences and our desert experiences and trying to figure things out. And, and it's all, almost as though nothing is changing and we're thinking, it's just gonna be the same thing day after day after day. The wilderness is normally dry, no water. And yet God is saying here, I will do a new thing. This gives us such hope, doesn't it? A new thing. It's new because we have never seen that happen before. In a wilderness, if something happens and some water starts to flow just like that, that's a new thing. That's not a, a normal occurrence, right? If you see rivers in a desert, you're like, what on earth? We shouldn't just walk through and say, oh, the rivers in the desert. <laughs> no. You don't expect to see rivers in the desert, do you, right? No. So when we go through our wilderness, and, and, and I didn't even plan on saying this, but we did ask the Holy Spirit, didn't we, to lead and direct. Yes. So when we're going through these wilderness or desert experiences in our lives, and we're not expecting anything but dryness and, and, and just rough situations, guess what? We can expect the God who, who wrote this, to do the same in our experiences. Bring about the rivers. Bring about a way in the wilderness, in our wildernesses, in our deserts. So he's, he's doing a new thing. It's a new year. And usually at the beginning of the year, we are expecting new things. I don't know of anybody who doesn't expect new things in the beginning of the year. Do you just think that way? 2021 was such, therefore 22 is going to be the same. We'll go on to 23. God's willing our lives to be in spirit and it will be the same. Is there anybody that doesn't really um, expect anything new? Let me see your hands, please. I don't see any hands. I don't see any feet. So that means that we're all expecting something new, right? We were made like that. We want... We want something new. We want some change going on. I don't know about you, but I think they said variety is the spice of life, right? So you want something different. You don't want the same old, same old, same old all the time. So, <laughs> when God says change is coming, we can believe it. He didn't just say it because he didn't have anything else better to say. I just feel like talking to them, so I'm going to tell them change is coming. I'm going to give them false hope. No, he doesn't do that. He's not a man, the Bible said, that he should lie. He's not, I'm not a man that he should lie. He doesn't tell lies. And if he says something, he will fulfill it. Might not be today, 
might not be tomorrow, might not be next week, might not be this year. But you know what? When the time is right, according to his will and his purposes, in the fullness of time, the Bible said Jesus came. He didn't come before the time he was supposed to come or after the time. He came right on time. He'll come right on time for you in your circumstances. There's a song we sing a lot. I don't think we've sung it here. He's a long time God. Yes, he is. Oh, long time God. Yes, he is. Job said he may not come when he wanted, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Mm. On time God. We can, we can trust that. Even in our waiting, and in our laboring, and in our suffering, God will be right there on time to bring about the change that he says he will bring about. You know the seasons change. I know here in Jamaica, <laughs> we don't really have seasons, although I've heard my husband saying it's winter. <laughs> right now it's a little cooler. Thank God anybody's here that, that's here is glad for the cool breezes we've been having. I just love the cool breezes. <laughs> Right? So he says, he talks about summertime, and I'm like, summertime? <laughs> it's, all, it's summer all year round. Yeah, you gotta have a name for it. <laughs> so, it changes, right? <laughs> the seasons do change, right? So, I mean, right now it's cooler here, so I guess this is, we're in a different season. So there are different seasons that you and I go through in our lives. We have seasons in our lives that we go through. And, um, just as the seasons change, things don't remain the same. If things were to remain the same, you know, we've been thinking about the seasons. If things were to remain the same, guess what? We wouldn't have, excuse me, various types of fruit, if you think about it, because in one season, you can have, can have oranges and pears and coconuts and um, pigeon peas and stuff like that. You can have that in one season. Then when the season changes, you don't see any more of those things. Then you see something else, custard apple and sweet soap and maize berries, his favorite, mine too, was. Um, just all the different things you can think about, right? Some vegetables you can find in some seasons, some you can't find. You have to wait until that season comes again, right? So the seasons change. And our seasons change as well. And you know what? If the seasons didn't change, guess what happened? If things remain the same, God would not get any glory. It's like, why is she saying that? Why would he not get any glory? And this came to me. If the Israelites remained in Egypt, you remember that account where the children of Israel were in bondage to the Egyptians for how long? 400 years. So if that didn't change and they just remained in bondage, 400, 500, 600, 1,000 going on, what would happen? God wouldn't be glorified. See how God is glorified in this. Their season changed. He called for to deliver Moses, as you recall. And do you remember those 10 plagues? In, 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 in enacting or carrying out those 10 plagues, God was glorified in every single one of them. And I know you have read them. That was one of my dad's favorite um, passages. In fact, I remember um, when I stayed with him uh, a couple of years, many years ago, not too, too many, but just prior to his passing away, um, he had a, a vent over his head, the bed, and sometimes with the AC, the, he would feel a little bit of that over his head, so he would say, 
just grab a towel from the center and just put that on my hip, <laughs> so over my hip. So I would put the towel right there. And I remember he would be talking about the, um, he, was, he was so very interested in the, 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 the whole movie, the Ten Commandments, you've seen that. And so I remember one time when I kind of talked him in, I said, hello Moses, because <laughs> he had the towel over his head. And he looked just like, to me, I was just comparing that, he would just chuckle, you know? But Moses was the deliverer who brought them out. And through those plagues, every single plague, God was glorified. So, think about it. If there were no change, if their situation just remained the same, what would happen? None of these plagues would take place, and God would not be glorified. Um, the Red Sea, when they got to the Red Sea, that was a miracle right there. How could all these people, children, carts with horses, not horses, cattle, and different ones, how could they have gone through the Red Sea on foot like that? They would have drowned, right? So what did God do? He created a miracle right there and he parted the Red Sea, and they were able to walk through. Of course, you remember what happened with Pharaoh and his army. They said, oh boy, God has done this for them. Oh, we're good. No, they didn't say God. Mm -mm -mm. They had other gods. They said, oh, this has happened for them. We're going we're gonna to try the same thing. We're going to go right behind them. And see, that never happened for them. The sea started to close back up, go right back up. And they were drowned. But. Think about Elijah and the widow. First Kings 17, 8 to 16. We're going to look at that. I want to just bring out how change takes place and God gets the glory from the change taking place. So, First Kings 17, 8 to 16. All right, so the word of the Lord came unto him, which is Elijah, uh -huh, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain or to keep you while you're there. So I want you to know that this was during the time of famine. Um, it says, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. She was getting some sticks together. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And it's like, okay, this is a time of famine now. There's no food. Things are really scarce, and it's, it's one thing for this man to ask me for water, but, I mean, he's asking me for bread as well? My goodness gracious, wow. And Elijah, um, I think we skipped one. And as she was going... Which one is it? And as she was going, she asked for the morsel of bread. He asked for the morsel of bread. And as she was going to fetch it, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, Can you see? and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and, and my son, that we, we may eat it and what? Yeah. Die. Oh my God. She was actually at the place where she had come to grips with the fact that, look, there's a famine, things are really bad, I've accepted it, there's not going to be any change, I'm just going to fix this little stuff here, my son and I are going to eat it, give thanks for it, then we're just going to die. That's it. Nothing's going to change, really, because this famine is has been ongoing now for a long time, three years, I think. So, this is it. Sometimes, you and I, 
are resigned to just accepting what comes into our lives and say, well, this is what we've been seeing. This is, this is what we're accustomed to. We're, we're, we're accepted it. We're not gonna even become stressed out about it because this is just how things are. It's just life. It's just called life. So we're not gonna expect any better, really. Why? It was the same last year. It was the same the year before that. Why should it change this year? Hmm. I'm just gonna fix this meal. My son and I will eat it, and then we just die. That's it. Punto final. See? Last thing. Nada más. Nothing more. That's it. End of the story. Finito. Que? Finito. Finito. All right. So we have somebody else speaking Espanol, Spanish here. All right. Ella habla español también, sí. <laughs> I was just saying she speaks Spanish too. All right, so that's where we are sometimes because we have been accustomed to just things being the same way. This widow woman was just gonna leave things as they were. Let's keep reading. Elijah said unto her, this is where the change comes in. Fear not. Don't be anxious. Don't be stressed out. I'm, sh I'm so, you know, I'm thinking when he said that to her, she was like, oh my goodness, who is this man? Really? Doesn't he understand what, what's going on? Doesn't he understand the economy? Doesn't he understand that there's inflation? You know, we would say that right in our days. Doesn't he understand what's going on? He's saying fear not. That must have been so, you know, heartwarming for her to hear those words. Go and do as thou hast said. What? Are you serious? Really? And I only have this amount working with, and he's telling me to go and do this and give me first? How selfish of him, <laughs> really. But he was speaking by faith. He was a prophet, right? So it says, make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after, then afterwards, make for thee and thy son. Make one for me first. He was testing her faith, wasn't he? God was testing her faith. And sometimes, you know, in bringing about change, the Lord will take us through certain pathways, and that is, is, is to see if we are willing for him to work to bring about that change? Or do we want to stay in our circumstances because in our mind, we can see this far and not further than that. So we're like, okay, Lord, hold on. I know you're telling me about further, but I'm only seeing right here. So then we have to pray and say, Lord, help us, help our short-sightedness, help our lack of vision, help our lack of faith, help us to see what you see further ahead and not to dwell just right here. Not to, not to see just that small morsel that we have right here. That you can take that and multiply that and bring about change for me, for my family. We have to pray and say, God, please, help my short-sightedness. Help me to see what you see. Help me to have the faith and to trust you that you can bring about this change. I think I have some more verses with that, right? So this is now what Elijah says to her. He's prophesying. He's saying, this is what God is saying to her. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. She had a little bit at, at the bottom of that barrel now. Sometimes you and I come to the, the bottom of the barrel, right? The bo bottom of the barrel meaning our circumstances get really dire. They get really ugh, stressed, stressful. And we don't really see any way out. Just like the children of Israel. They were between the Red Sea and... <laughs> they were between a rock and a hard place, as we say. 
and so there's no way out. So then you have to just trust God and go forward, right? So he says here, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, means you will run out of it, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Because there was famine at the time. So in other words, he's saying, this is what the Lord is saying to you directly. He is not going to allow your substance to run out from this day forward, right until the time he sends rain, whenever that would be. That's what he prophesied to this widow woman. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and she and he, Elijah, because remember God said, I'm sending you to a widow woman and she will sustain you, she will keep you. She, so she, he, Elijah, and her house, her son and everybody in the house, did eat how many days? Many, many days, not just one day. And right until the time when rain came, and we don't know when exactly that was, that could have been another two years. So, you know, she could have done nothing really about it when he's saying, go and get this and do that and do out there and feed me first and feed, <laughs> then you feed yourself and just she could have said, I don't know, I don't know what it is about this man, but I don't know why he's telling me all this, but I believe when he prophesied to her she was convicted. She knew that God was saying that, look, if you, if you obey, then this is what's gonna happen. But she could have really stayed where she was in her present circumstances because she had waited for so long and saw nothing good coming out of her circumstances. And then guess what? She would not have reaped the rewards. She would not have seen the change she would have got nothing. She would have remained right where she was. And God maybe would have had to send him to somebody else. But he used Elijah to bring about change for this woman and her household. Now, I don't know what kind of changes God is planning on bringing about. But I do know that he wants us to be expectant. He wants us to be looking. And, and as I said earlier, he was emphatic about the fact that we need to stop saying Change isn't coming. Forget this. We're used to seeing all this going on. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing. I don't know in what area he's planning on bringing about a change, but he wants us to be expectant. He wants us to be watching. And um, he said that his glory will be revealed. Because remember, I was saying if there's no change, then God doesn't get the glory, he doesn't get the praise and the honor. People are not going to say, Oh my God, that had to be God that did this. This thing changed. This thing was this way all the time, all along, every day, every year. This was going on, the same thing, same old, same old. Now things have reversed or just changed. So who did that? And then people would say, was it you? Was it you? Was it you? It was God and God alone. God and God alone, he did it. So then, he gets the glory. And he said his glory will be revealed. Isaiah chapter 40, and is that 15? Five. Five. Verse five? Okay, verse five. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. We will see it. When you take the veil off something, then you're showing it, you're exposing it, right? So this is taking the, 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 the veil off, whatever it is that, that you and I might be looking at, circumstances, when they change, sometimes you and I might see it and somebody else might not see it. So say, did you see what just happened? What, what was it that happened? What, what just happened? But God says he will reveal it, he'll take the veil off it so you, you, you and I can see it and say, oh, Wow, he says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh, all of us, with skin and bones, all of us, all flesh, we're gonna what? We're gonna see it together. So then, you won't see it and then the other one says, I don't see it, both will see it. 
all of us will see it. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Right? If God says it, even though it doesn't happen today, or tomorrow, or next week, or next month, because he said it, just because he said it, it means it will happen. We don't know when, but be expectant. That's what he wants us to do, to be expectant, be watching. And he says, definitely stop saying that. Stop saying, nothing's gonna change. Because that's limiting him. That's limiting him and saying, well, he says he's God Almighty, he says he's powerful, but I don't see, I don't see him moving. Nothing has changed in my life, really, I mean. Stop saying it. Behold, I do a new thing. He does a new thing. This is a new year. Don't know what he's going to do in our lives, but we are expecting him as we seek him. We're expecting him to do something new. We're expecting him to bring about change in whatever area there needs to be change. So I just pray that somehow this word entered into the depths of your being and that it is making a difference. It is causing you, causing me, to desire the change that God says he's bringing. Because he's bringing it. He's bringing it. So God bless you and thank you so much for your listening ear. I don't know if anybody has anything that they would like to share. If this word did something for you and you'd like to share it, please do so. And if not, I'm going to ask Pastor Wayne to come and give his comments. Comments? <laughs> My comments? Yes, 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 yes. As she um, brought that word and was talking, I was thinking about where in the word it says that, um, and it's kind of related, right? Change. Where it says that um, the Lord says that the people perish. Why? Lot of knowledge and vision, right? So the vision is you want to see something different. I'm sure every one of us, uh, we're going through something different this year, right? <laughs> we're all going through something different this year. You know, it's something that we see and we want to do, a change, right? Yes. So um, the Lord wants us, wants us to not just stuck in a rut all of our life. We want to see something different in Him, right? Because it's all about Him, right? We live as Christians for Him. So whatever the situation, we're going to change for our good and ultimately for, for His good of what He has in store for us and for the people that we have in our circle, right? Our family, our friends, our work associates, you know, maybe one day they'll come to the Lord if they don't know Him. Right? That's our ultimate purpose, right? To go out and win people for the Lord, be that shepherd, be that, that um, uh, um, fisherman, right? To bring people into the, onto the Lord. So yes, I see that as an, op an op opportunity for all of us to change and to do something different in our lives, right? We're always, even though we don't, we don't may not realize. Even if my if my 87 year old father, he he sits on the porch every day and and he has his meals and he takes his bath and he watches his cricket and but it's it's it, in, in in subtle ways there are always changes and even in his situation, right? He's growing older, things are changing, he's seen different people, and the cricket matches might change, and so on and so forth, but yeah. And, and we continually pray for, for his soul, you know. He doesn't, he had, hasn't got there yet, but we continue praying. We've spoken to him, and uh, hasn't got there yet, but we, we, we just depend on the Lord and the Holy Spirit that will change his heart, and one day he'll come to, to know him. So. Thank you for that word. Thank you for that enlightenment of what God has has in store for us to, to learn and to understand from from this good word. So 
Anybody else have anything? Anybody has a prayer request that they might need? Welcome back, Doc. She's our she's our community dentist and orthodontist. I've had my nice teeth cleaned <laughs> from her. So thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> That's a little bit advertising. <laughs> okay, I'll add another one. Veronica here has. She has a little shop out there in our priory, and she's now changing. I'm changing. And she's becoming, she's changing. She's going to become a... Esthetician. Esthetician. Well, well, renewing my skills. Renewing her skills. So whenever you need your Nails. fingers and your nails and your toes and your teeth and all those wonderful things taken care of, she's right next door. <laughs> so Lord God, we just thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you for the... You did? Okay. Sandra, prayer request. Okay. So we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, Lord God, yes. for your word, for all that you have for us, Lord God. We ask that you could that we go out this week, Lord God, with the with the knowledge and the understanding, Lord God, that you have given us from this word, Lord God, that change is to come. Change is good. Change is from the Lord. And we thank you for these things in your precious holy name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.